Welcome to the final episode of our Thirsty Sword Lesbian series, everyone. We have some fantastic discussion for you today, and we can't wait for you to hear it. Um, a very good fanfic section. Mm -hmm. Not that any of them are bad, but this was very good. <laughs> uh, before we get to that, as usual, announcements. Yeah. I feel uh, like a school principal every time I say that. <laughs> announcements. Boom, boom. Monday, you... <laughs> February 21st. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to leave a five-star review but aren't sure what to say? May we suggest, wow, such podcast, much characters, or this is fine, or whatever other meme formats you want to utilize. Uh, regardless of what you want to say, we would love to hear from you on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podchaser, and the like. We'll actually read them out here at the end of the show in our call to action section and thank you personally because we love hearing from you and it really does make our days a bit brighter. As we were writing this too, we decided that we should make some character creation cast memes. Mm. So if you have ideas for character creation cast memes, we would love to see them. Yeah. You can send them to us on Twitter or on our Discord at discord.charactercreationcast.com. We have a lovely little group over there. So mm -hmm. we'd love to Absolutely. see you too and send us your memes. Send us your memes. In addition to leaving reviews, if you want to support us another way, you can become a patron of the One Shot Podcast Network. At $5 a month, you get access to the secret archive, which has bonus content from all the shows on the network. Money you give helps pay for hosting fees, art for the shows on the network. It buys new equipment like this fabulous new microphone that makes me sound amazing. 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 Um... You can become a patron at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Yeah. And finally, as mentioned in this series, there was a fan created bundle released with six new playbooks and three new settings for thirsty sword lesbians. You can find that for download on itch. If you enjoyed what you heard this week and want even more. And if you want something in a more hardcover format, you can go and pick up the advanced lovers and lesbians expansion uh, through backer kit. That it also includes many new playbooks and settings that are all just so good. Uh, we will have links in our show notes for you to follow to get to those. That is it for announcements for this week. So please enjoy this discussion episode with some great fanfic and just generally a lot of really fun discussion. I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed this one a lot. Absolutely. Um, then stick around for the outtakes at the end of the show, which are always delightful. And so many, <laughs> so many outtakes. So many, uh, <laughs> maybe even just from this cold open recording where Ryan and I couldn't do words. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We'll see. We'll see. Our discussion episode. Last time we finished our session zero for Thirsty Sword Lesbians. This episode we will be discussing the character creation process. We are thrilled to welcome back April Kit Walsh. Do you want to reintroduce yourself and tell everybody about the character that you made? Oh, sure thing. So I am April Walsh, she, her, and gay gam pronouns. I'm the designer of Thirsty Sword Lesbians, which you can find at swordlesbians.com. I also create other games, which are on my itch at GaySpaceship.com, because I am Gay Spaceship Games, and I am at Gay Spaceship GMS on Twitter. In keeping with being Gay Spaceship Games, I wound up creating a character who is a gay spaceship. So, I didn't even think about I that. I didn't even think about it either. <laughs> this is so perfect. That's incredible. Um, well, as we were developing the setting and the characters in the first installment, we wound up with this spacefaring necromantic pirate vibe. And mm. the ship is powered by 
this cluster of souls. They're not burned up or consumed. They Mm -hmm. are just there sort of animating the ship in this necromantic way. And that is the character that I am playing. My name is Solar Flare. And I, my history is that I started out very much as like a people pleasing, uncertain vessel. So I know all of these people are inside of me. They rely on me. I'm their home and caretaker. And I just have to to have to mold myself to what it is that they want. Um, And then over the course of some imagined personal growth in the backstory, um, sort of grew out of that and started being able to be more assertive, which all culminated in absorbing the ghost of a mermaid monarch who Mm -hmm. is completely imperious and dummy and is now the front face of this amalgam of ghosts that is solar flare so in addition to being um on the prow of the ship like um a masthead whatever that's called on the mm-hmm. front of the ship um it is also the form that i take when i appear as this ghostly mermaid with a crown of bones and just vivid glowing white eyes trailing spirit essence and um still caring for everyone on the ship still being a home um but starting to also have my own personality and needs and i am using the hollow goddess playbook that catherine cross wrote as one of the expansion playbooks that is in the advanced lovers and lesbians supplement for tsl so that's solar flare Oh, it's so, so good. good. I, so I, good. I, I I love that we have mastheads on these like spaceships. Yeah, uh, it is such a good <laughs> uh, aesthetic of like you know sci-fi spaceship with you know old mm-hmm. school masthead type uh, mounted right on the front. Yeah. yeah. So I, I hope where that we're the outside is like also kind of like iridescent as you Ooh. like yeah, just to like oh, go like with that, that mermaid thing, you know? Oh, I love oh, that. Yeah. Because yeah. I like, like wave my hands of... like this. This is mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> For all you ripples listeners of, out there. Uh, <laughs> ripples of ghost essence like yeah. reflected yes. light underwater playing mm-hmm. across the hull. Oh, oh it's such so a good that. aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, spooky space mermaid. Great aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. As I've often said. <laughs> Ryan, would you like to tell us about your character? Absolutely. So I made the Legion. Uh, Ariella Flourish is her name. Uh, she is a bunny folk that uh, carries around a parasol that transforms into an elegant sword. Um, and is uh, basically the reincarnation of a uh, an individual that has uh, been reincarnated as the same, you know, sort of person over the centuries and millennia um, as this legion of magical girl uh, heroes uh, in in this uh, particular uh, area of the, the universe, I guess. Uh, and uh, basically, she is uh, here to uh, try not to fall in love too much with people, because uh, if if that happens, the people she loves end up uh, either leaving her or dying uh, a, a, a death before their time uh, because of uh, the tragedy that's attached to this legion. Uh, every single one of the past selves uh, in this legion have had tragic uh, stories with the people that they loved. And the more that they loved them, the more tragic an ending it was to that story. Ugh. So good. So good. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Amelia, how about yourself? Um, I used the spooky witch playbook. Surprise. Uh, <laughs> my character is a flower folk named Amaranth uh, for the kind of flower that she is. Um, and she can talk to these souls in the ship. And so that's, that's part of her job is, is keeping this ship running and sort of, um, managing the souls that are helping the ship function. She is also followed around by this one particular soul. Um, but weirdly, none of the other souls can see it or hear it. So she doesn't really know what's up with that yet. Um, she is, um, she has a, a 
close relationship, kind of, with Solar Flare because our job is to keep the ship running. But I forget what your connection was. It was like that I left you behind. Is that right? Yeah. So you remind me part of the um, emotional significance of the Hollow Goddess playbook is these sort of half remembered things from a long history, as well as a sense of loss of leaving things behind or being left. And so being in this relationship where I am depending on you to help sort of maintain me uh, is reminding me of um, a time that I was abandoned by a caretaker. And so we set up this sort of anxious attachment where Solar Flare um, is, is concerned that um, Amaranth is going to leave. But also, like, I'm the only one around that can really talk to you at all. So that's really kind of the only connection that you can have at this point. So there's not a lot of a lot of choice there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, I can manifest, like, I can be a ghost and a character and, like, talk to people. But mm-hmm. um, probably people have weird ideas about what it means to be a ghost that, like, you understand yeah. better because you're a spooky witch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I also, when we did our relationship questions, said that the unseen, these souls, uh, have warned me about Ariella, Mm -hmm. I think, because they have, as souls have been around for generations, they are very aware of this curse that you have of becoming close to people and those people meeting tragic ends. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've warned me to kind of stay away, um, I have a, a, a punk aesthetic. Um, my my drive is for revenge against one of our NPCs <laughs> that I'm sure we'll we'll discuss in a minute. Um, but also, I think that she's the only person that's normal. So um, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, a lot of you know feelings about our mm. uh, one or two of our NPCs that we made here. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, the NPCs that we pointed out specifically, uh, Francesca, the ship mm-hmm. cook slash mechanic, uh, that tries to help everybody uh, out on the ship uh, and help keep them uh, happy and, and healthy. Just wants uh, somebody to reciprocate. And yeah, to, I feel to like have she's very much the matriarch playbook. Yeah, like, like, effectively. That's the vibe sure. that I got. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, there's Evangeline. Uh, oh, sweet Evangeline. Sweet, uh, hot Evangeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Evangeline. Yeah. Evangeline our, our is... nemesis, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So she is the captain of this rival crew that does not use sustainable soul technology, mm-hmm. so we've determined, um, and is just ruthless, but so good looking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so suave. So suave. And voice, oh. oh my god. She is a literal siren, yes. captain of the soul eater. The soul eater. <laughs> she doesn't oh have god. to be subtle because she's just that hot. She can get away with it. I know. <laughs> and oh. one day she'll take you for everything you've got. God, I hope so. <laughs> 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 uh, and that's Thirsty Sword Lesbians. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, uh, so good. Uh, well, let's go ahead and dive right into a segment we are calling D20 for your thoughts. D20 for your thoughts? In this segment, we talk to our guests about their thoughts on this character creation process, um, how it relates to the system, and then also to character creation and gaming as a whole. We like to ask the cliche question right away. How did you get into role-playing games? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so when I was a tiny April in elementary school, I, well, I had read through the the basic D&D red box, but I never got to play that. The first RPG that I actually got to experience was running the West End game Star Wars on the school bus in oh. second grade. Um, so we would roll dice in a shoebox because we were on like a moving bus. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, you know, we had a Wookiee, a Jedi, and a astromech droid, which sounds like the setup to a joke. Um, <laughs> and... A Wookiee, an astromech, and a Jedi were on a school bus. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I found my notes, and it's just like drawings of Star Wars vehicles with like some stats written next to them. But like, so that that was it was basically a very early introduction and also mm-hmm. a very early like GMing experience. 
Yeah. So I like GM'd a lot before I got to play and um, played a bunch of different systems and then got introduced to the narrative story game side of things through Fate and uh, Apocalypse World. And then that all eventually led to Thirsty Sword Lesbians. Very awesome. cool. Mm-hmm. What do you look for in a system as far as character creation? Like what sort of pieces need to be there for great characters to happen for you? Well, I think there are a couple of ways that you can approach that. One way is if you have a sort of fixed vibe or setting or um, narrative, and then the character options are really connected to that story in a way that immediately means you're going to be invested in what's going on. You're going to, you know, have some some paths to follow. Mm -hmm. Um, And and so I think that's that's one way you can take it. Um, And then another way you can take it is creating a more sort of generic. um, Maybe what I mean is flexible approach that lets people come with a wide range of concepts and then implement them to tell Mm. whatever the story is that they figured out that they want to tell. I think both of those modes work really well. And I also think that Thirsty Sword Lesbians is a little bit of both of those in the sense that Mm. it does uh, orient your characters and stories towards this kind of um, queer action tale of found family and or romance. Uh, while also the core playbooks in particular are designed to be general enough that they can speak to a wide range of experiences. So the chosen playbook, for instance, is all about having a destiny that is socially enforced, that is not what you want. You can take that in a ton of different directions, obviously. Um, The seeker who has these toxic commandments from their upbringing, you get to define what those are. So you can express a lot of things that way. And one of the things Mm -hmm. that's been really neat in the expansion, Advanced Lovers and Lesbians, as well as in the community-created playbooks, is that when you're not writing a core book, you can actually get pretty specific with what a playbook is doing. So you can have a playbook that is specifically about um, exploring what it means to you be in a culture that is exoticized and where people are trying to take your power and um, you could implement that character as a trickster, but uh, Mariam Ahmad wrote the Naga playbook um, to speak to it more specifically. So there's there's this combination of, um, you know, all of the playbooks point you at the kind of stories that we're trying to tell. They all set up an emotional conflict. They all give you ways of connecting to other people. And then they vary in how general they are from the core playbooks that try to cover as much ground as possible to these these new sort of niche playbooks that are really directly tailored at a more specific experience. Mm-hmm. So those are all those are all things that um, I think are are worth uh, contemplating when you're designing a game and making a character and that we tried to execute on. Yeah. And, and it, it sounds like as long as the game lets you be, you know, uh, both a thirsty person and a <laughs> sword person and a lesbian, uh, you know, that you're good to go. I mean, you're the fun part go. is, you know, there's a section of the book that that says, what if not thirsty? What if not swords? What if not lesbians? Yeah. They're actually not mandatory. Like It's setting a baseline exp- expectation, but. It certainly doesn't have to be romantic. The found family stories are, mm-hmm. you know, they emerge and they also can be the the total focus of the game. It doesn't have to be swords. The swords can be a metaphor. You can be playing chess against each other. There's a setting in the expansion mm. book that's that's about these tense games of chess where you're moving your piece while locking eyes with your opponent, inviting them to <laughs> capture oh, man. Your, your, your knight, <laughs> but at what cost? So... Yeah. Um, And then, of course, you don't have to be lesbians. Like, first of all, you know, any kind of queerness. But the point is that the game takes you out of a mode where heterosexuality and patriarchy are being enforced. And all it takes to help people sort of arrive at queerness is removing the enforcement of harmful norms and oppressive norms. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's this tongue-in-cheek line that's like, yeah, you could play, you know, thirsty, cishet, 
swords people, but don't be surprised if the game makes them gay. And obviously what that means is don't be surprised if playing in a in a mode that eliminates the enforcement of uh, cis hetero norms lets you find out something new and interesting about the characters or yourselves. Like my favorite fan mail, there are two favorite fan mails that I get. One is I figured out I'm queer. <laughs> Thank you for making this game. <laughs> and the other is like, I got a girlfriend <laughs> by playing thirsty sword lesbians with them. Well, I love both of those. <laughs> those are my favorite. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> uh, that's called emotional bleed. <laughs> yeah. And, and we love that. So great. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel like the process of character creation in this game stacks up against other games? I want to know particularly other PBTA games, um, because a lot of them have that same kind of process of like getting your playbook and picking your choices and stuff like that. Are there things that you think this game has that some of the other ones were maybe missing for you or um, things that you definitely felt like you needed? So I think that, there are a number of PBTA games that treat the playbooks as a sort of genre emulation where mm -hmm. you have playbooks that correspond to character types that you see in stories of that nature. So if you're making a superhero one, you've got archetypes that correspond to the tanky one or the fast one or whatever. And something that... Uh, that I really like, my, my favorite PBTA games started to look more at what is the kind of story that that character is going to feature in. And mm -hmm. so TSL, you know, incorporates that and builds on it. Each playbook is centered around a kind of emotional conflict. So you might have the Nature Witch, who is basically the baby gay playbook where you, for whatever reason, interacting with people feels new, um, which mm -hmm. may be because you just transitioned your gender and you're interacting in a new way. And um, and like that's how the metaphor connects. But you can you can take it a few different directions. Um, and so you're telling the story of you know, wanting to have new experiences, you know, as your as yourself. Mm -hmm. or the devoted who is the toxic self-sacrifice playbook where um you're really bad at self-care uh and you're really good at putting your well-being on the line for your devotion and for your friends mm -hmm. and um that that's something that i really enjoy about tsl and about all of the playbooks that others have written for it is seeing um the sort of growth arc for the character as well as what's going to be dramatic and fun to figure out about themselves mm -hmm. so it's and one of the other reasons that it doesn't do genre emulation is because you know what would i be emulating where are the positive portrayals of you know lesbian action romance or found family <laughs> right. it's not something that mass media is going to give us um mm -hmm. so there in the section of the book that talks about you know, if you want to tell like a fan fiction kind of story, right? Like you want to take established media and then play in Thirsty Sword Lesbians. Uh, one of the elements is figuring out, you know, what are the toxic powers? Because maybe something that's presented in a positive light in the show is actually, you know, properly considered an adversary when you're trying to tell the stories of people who are marginalized in that world. So... Um, it, one of the titles that I considered was uh, slash fic the RPG because it very much is a lens that you can apply to a lot of different settings or stories. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to tell stories that reflect queer values in, you know, a piece of mass media that you have, you know, nostalgia for or attachment to, but really doesn't align with the values that you have, then mm -hmm. it's a fun way to do it, right? You put this lens on and then uh, change the world as a bunch of, you know, found family disaster lesbians. Yeah, I, I really <laughs> like how the the playbooks are, are easy to slot into each of the, the different scenarios and settings in this game where you, you like you said it, it's not meant to emulate a genre it's meant to uh, have that sort of experience be projected into the world that either you're creating or playing in mm -hmm. um and, and I, I love the the world creation uh that we did as well it was really simple to do and it, it really kind of set up 
everything that we did and selected for our playbooks, even down to what playbook did we actually select, mm -hmm. right? And and it's it's interesting that um, we can we can go into those stories from a number of angles as well. Uh, like you had three stages <laughs> for your story, April. That that you could have started with one of three different playbooks, and it would have been a different stage of this character's existence. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's right. really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when people ask, like, what playbook is this character from this series? I'm like, well, in season one, she was an right? infamous because she yeah. had just left the evil whatever. And then, you know, in this moment, you know, when her costume changes for season three, that's when she becomes the chosen or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Like, right, right. Yeah, yeah there's that's actually, a lot more, like, personality types than, like, genre tropes. Um, mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I think that, like, there were you know, all of us like, we're like, well, I could do this one. I could do this one. I could do this one, you know, because it just very much felt like, okay, which, um, which conflict am I relating to in this, in this particular moment? Because mm -hmm. I think any of those really could have been, I mean, I, I genuinely feel like any of us could have played anything. It was just like, some had a little more like flavor that I was into as opposed to what Ryan was into, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, like those conflicts really, you know, it's like, okay, what, you know, what string do I want to be pulling on at the beginning when I start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and like thinking about the, the control that you have over like the specific aspects of when you're getting into the playbook stuff, mm -hmm. like the aspects of the setting, like uh, you got to define uh, more of the spiritual stuff. Uh, Amelia with your yeah. your character the spooky witch and then I got this like whole lineage of backstory right. yeah. <laughs> that I can just pull you're like here's from some world history <laughs> yeah <laughs> like... here's here's some universe history and it's like we could have we could have been you know pirates in the high seas back in the olden days and, right. and stuck to a single world but we chose to do science fiction way out there in the universe and and now it's like this intergalactic history mm -hmm. uh, uh, that could span thousands of upon like thousands of years. Everybody knowing each other across different yeah, yeah, timelines. And across like, I really stars. feel like later on it would be really fun to start doing some of that, like in a different timeline. We, yeah. 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 Absolutely. And and like uh, and, and then this accumulation of all these souls that powers the ship is just like it's it's such a like a beautiful uh, character concept and and it fits so well together <laughs> in this world that we we created it's right. so good like we mm -hmm. came up with that ship before uh you know i remember that i get to make a character too like wow yeah we've got yeah. a gay spaceship right there right <laughs> <laughs> what more could you want <laughs> exactly but yeah, that is something, you know, some of the playbooks do more world building than others. And that's sort of an intentional choice. The The ideal is that you wind up with like two or three playbooks that do that. Um, and you can pick that if you are someone who wants to you know, have that have that role and responsibility. And then obviously it's all, you know, negotiated with the table. You don't get the unilateral power to say this is how the world is if the rest of the group isn't into it. Mm -hmm. um, and similarly, the, the playbooks also vary in terms of um, how much spotlight they put on you and how much um, drama they uh, require. You can make any playbook high spotlight, high drama, but there are some playbooks that intrinsically are going to put the spotlight on you. Like if you're playing The Chosen, where you have a destiny that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, is enforced against you, that's going to happen. You're probably going to be a high spotlight character. But even then, you get to pick what that looks like. Um, uh, there's the, the help me move, which, you know, gives you benefits when you're abducted and, mm -hmm. and yeah. encourages other people to rescue you versus the know your place move, which is for more of a toppy chosen. So um, <laughs> there are just there are a lot of a lot of levers that you can pick, uh, particularly since the the playbooks have a lot of flexibility. They all have a parallel structure, but they also each have a unique feature that yeah. um, lets gives you a lot of design space to do something unique with them mm -hmm. absolutely and, and you know comparing to other pbta games it's there's a lot that's familiar here too right mm -hmm. uh like if you're coming from 
uh, Monster of the Week or uh, Apocalypse World or, or or Masks or whatever. There's a lot of that that core PBTA playbook character creation experience uh, in here where you know you've got some some aesthetics that you can circle one of mm -hmm. to to help figure out your looks and then uh, your starting stats are. Uh, just two blocks that you get to choose from, which which I love that you get that choice. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of games out there that where you, this is your starting block for this character archetype, and now add one or two here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas this, you you get this really kind of uh, pivotal choice right at the beginning of two different ways to kind of play these playbooks, and and I thought that was uh, really smart to have that there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a, you know, there are trade-offs when you add any complexity, right? I think there are some games that are um, setting uh, accessibility to new players at the highest possible level, right? Mm -hmm. And there, you know, you don't have to make these choices. You can just take it, get it on the table, start playing. Um, so, you know, you can prioritize speed and you can prioritize simplicity. Um, but, you know, my, my, taste is to have a game that is simple enough that you can pick it up if you've never played an RPG or never played anything other than D&D &D and get the the sense of how to do a narrative game but mm -hmm. that also you know, gives you enough flexibility to make some some choices and really personalize um, who your character is going to be so that's yeah it's not wrong to just have one line of stats but uh, it's those are the reasons why it is the way it is in Thirsty Sword Lesbians mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Um, and then it, it was all easy to approach too, right? It was uh, very straightforward, and everything kind of made sense when when you just looked at it down the line what you needed to choose. And mm -hmm. um, and the moves are so good. Oh, they're really <laughs> they're really good. No, I feel like picking my moves really like made my character who they are like that was you know it's like and it's only two little check boxes but it was like okay you know like I have this spirit following me around and mm -hmm. I look super awkward when I try to do things you know it's like that really like <laughs> defines <laughs> everything you know yeah, that's that's one of your powers it is it's yeah it's so like awkward. you can you can do swords good but you look ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> yeah well and that's also part of move design um making sure that none of the moves are boring Right. Mm -hmm. So we talked mm -hmm. a little bit about um, moves that let you swap one stat for another. Right. That might be advantageous, but it's kind of boring to spend yeah. one of your move picks on. So there are moves that do that in TSL, but they also do something different. Like make right. it look ridiculous. Right. That was, yeah. And it was like, and if you roll badly, <laughs> it goes really badly. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. I like that that's like in there. It's like, oh, if you get a six minus, it's like really bad. Not just regular yeah. bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really bad. But that's been one of the um one of the things that I've noticed now having worked on over 20 different playbooks, because we have 19 official playbooks and then a mm -hmm. whole bunch of fan playbooks that um I've consulted on. And you can make every move interesting. You don't mm -hmm. ever have to have the boring thing or the obligatory, like, be yeah. good at swords move. You just, every move can be neat and have an effect that's not just, like, I add a number to another roll or something. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that all of all of the playbooks have sort of had a fine-tooth comb through them to make sure that each choice is actually fun and interesting. Yeah. Um, while also you typically interacting with the mechanics <laughs> but some of them are purely narrative and um your character ryan has the ability to take on the appearance of anyone they've ever loved in any of their lifetimes yeah and that's just i love that that was you know pam pam's playbook um and having played a legion that's just incredible right because yeah. sure you could like use it to put on a disguise but who is that person mm -hmm. that you once loved Oh. Right. And like to get like what kind of emotional like damage does that do to like, you know, especially in your case where it was like you lost everyone that you loved uh -huh. right? and now uh -huh. I have to be them. Oh, I know. And like, you know, like what if it's a situation where other people didn't know you loved that person and now you have to admit that. And mm -hmm. well, I actually had a legion who because one of the aspects of the legion also is that you're losing your memories. This person claimed that once we were in love, I'm like, I don't remember you at all. And then I tried to turn into them and it worked. It's like, oh no, oh. I forgot. I forgot everything about oh this person. God. And once we were in love, 
So that was, oh, goodness. you know, it, it, oh. it's just a good playbook. I'm really glad you like decided to make a legion. Devastating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we didn't even get to playing the game. And it's like we've, <laughs> we've got this like wonderful web of just all sorts of messy and like both good and like mm-hmm. struggling messy stuff that we can play with. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be uh, just it, it, it will it will make for a fantastic uh, and and tragic story in in a lot of cases. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad we got to do the world building, right? So that mm-hmm. we got to invent those NPCs, like Francesca, our hardworking kobold, and Evangeline, yes. the pirate yeah. queen. Yes. So. Um, mm-hmm. It really does feel like it kind of leads into our next question. How does the the process of character creation reinforce the feel of this game and set expectations for play? Um, reading through the moves, reading through like the the smitten moves. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. On there. Uh, like, y- yeah, you're going to you're going to be a little hot under the collar at times. <laughs> like, and... I, know what, I know what this game is about. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Uh and and yeah, it's it definitely has prepared me for uh for that sort of thirst. I think it made us really eager to like make those kinds of decisions than when we were doing our relationships too. Is yes. like we've already looked at the moves, we've seen what those are, and then we get into those relationships and it's like, okay, I'm not afraid to just like go for it now and be like, this is what happened. It was tragic, mm-hmm. but also love. But like, you know, yeah. so I think it it really gave us a solid foundation for mm-hmm. setting up some of those. Well and that's something that I find also running the game the relationship questions are really fruitful uh, for giving you things to explore that you know the characters are invested in. Even mm-hmm. so we, you know, because we're a small group, we pointed some of those relationships at NPCs. But even if it's all among the PCs, mm-hmm. you've got, um, you know, these dynamics of, you know, like I feel betrayed by you or I look up to you or I used to have a crush on you uh, mm-hmm. or the uh, the nature which has one of my favorites which is um they thought they took you on a date and you thought it was just a fun friendly time um, oh no because <laughs> the nature witch can can be a little oblivious at times uh, so, that is uh that is a universal queer experience right <laughs> <laughs> if ever there was one <laughs> um but yeah, getting those relationships really fleshes out who the people are and what kind mm-hmm. of um, themes you want to explore in the story. And that's it's a critical part of character creation. And it's often it's often the first time that people wind up smitten with each other, which is yeah. a mechanic we talked about in the first installment where whenever you feel like it, you can declare that you're smitten, but then you have to answer a really emotionally fraught question from your playbook that's going to make that a dramatic relationship to tell a story about. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And now we're talking about this smitten mechanic uh, a lot in this portion right now. And I'm wondering if we can talk about our specific smittens yeah. Uh, yeah. for our playbooks, because th- they're so good. They're so good. Like, for instance, my the Legion playbook, uh, Divest of My Armor, is the name of uh, their oh, smitten that's move. Oh, spicy. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so when you become smitten with someone, say why, give them a strain, and answer this question. Why are you certain that your tragedy will make you lose them? Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh. <laughs> so yeah. Good. Yeah, very straightforward for you because your tragedy always makes you lose, though. I know. And I didn't even read that before I figured out what my, <laughs> wow. what my tragedy, tragedy was going to be. Oh. It's, you're, you're ahead of the game. You already figured I out <laughs> I why your relationships are doomed. Yeah. But no, we will defy fate. I promise uh-huh. you this. Absolutely. This time it's different. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then there's also, um, this is under the Truths of Heart and Blade uh, section. Uh, my other one is uh, Under Heaven's Eye. When you mm. figure out a person uh, in physical conflict, you may additionally ask one of these questions, even on a six minus. What can I say or do to strike at your deepest tragedy? Oh. Or who were you and I in a past life? Ooh. Wow. Oh, so juicy. So good. Yeah. So what, yeah. What, are, what are both of yours? 
So my smitten question is, what obvious thing about you are you sure would make them reject you? Oh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's called, I, I, why I, did I bring up snails? I love that name so much. <laughs> <laughs> very, if you look um, carefully, every time the iconic spooky, spooky witch appears, there's some kind of snail accessory uh, somewhere on her person. This is oh. a little a little Easter egg. <laughs> Amazing. Um, let's see here. They figure out a person one. Uh, questions are, what makes you insecure and what haunts you? Mm. Whispered <sighs> secrets. Yeah. So good. Yeah, and that that's all part of this, you know, conceit that when you are locking blades and getting your heart pumping and you're all close that you can see more of the truth of somebody that like it surfaces in those intense moments. Mm -hmm. um, so every playbook has that that move uh, for when you're figuring out a person in physical conflict, you get to ask one of these bonus questions. And that's sort of an important principle of thirsty sore lesbians. You will often be narratively like fighting somebody with swords, but you will not be rolling the fight move um, mm -hmm. if your goal isn't to incapacitate them, right? Like, I want to know why you're attacking me. I'm rolling figure out, but like we're doing it while, you know, our blades are locked and I'm pressed yeah. against the wall or whatever. Yeah. So... I like that my my playbook move like uh, I like snails goes along with those too. Yeah. <laughs> when you're smitten with someone and figure them out, blurt out something weird and let them ask you a question from the list. <laughs> then ask them another question from the list, even on a six minus. Oh wow! Right? Yeah. You just get it's to like be that awkward. Blurt out something weird. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that in real life. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, oh. goodness. Yeah, so I'm playing The Hollow Goddess, um, which is an expansion playbook that Catherine Cross wrote. And um, while we're on that figure out a person in conflict topic, I think my favorite one to ask is who will mourn you? Oh, Ooh. my God. Right? Oh. oh. Right? It's, That's especially a power for like, move. Right? Yeah. As a collection of souls, like, you know, yeah. you're staring death in the face. Who will mourn you? Yes. <laughs> um, oh, but the smitten question is um how are they incompatible with your operating system mm -hmm. and the operating system is part of uh what you pick when you're creating the hollow goddess mm -hmm. um your hollow glamour and we had uh decided well i had decided last time on the crown hollow uh, glamour so that's where this concept of the mermaid queen comes mm. in and the drawback there is that when you're enticing someone you have to choose an approach that demonstrates your superiority and dominance <laughs> and um that that could be incompatible with somebody that you are that you are fighting. So yeah. if you become, or you know, so you're not actually. This is not the fighting one. This is the smitten one. You're smitten with someone, and you don't have the tools to approach them in a way that like is going to feel good to them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's drama. That's drama right there. That's right, like good. I'm this imperious mermaid queen ghost monster, and um, and. That's People just, might not be into that. Yeah, that might not be the the approach. And the, mm -hmm. so, even though I'm smitten, uh, the this this is going to be uh, something that requires me to you know do some growth or adapt or you mm -hmm. know maybe it'll end in tragedy. Maybe. So yeah, that's the oh, so that's good. the one for the hollow goddess. Oh, I love that so much. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I don't know. I I don't know about this question, Ryan, because I just don't. I guess we can ask April and you can decide whether you want to answer it. That's probably the better okay. way to do an interview. Huh? <laughs> we usually like to look at character sheets and talk about the intention behind them, because mm. what you put on a character sheet usually shows like what things are going to be important in a game. Um, do you have things that you were like, these need to be here? I don't know if it applies here because it's, you know, like PBTA playbooks yeah. kind of have a pretty standard set of things. But were there things that you felt like needed to be on the sheets or things that you were like, I don't want that on there? So I think the most important part of a TSL character sheet is the little blurb telling you what the emotional conflict and arc of that playbook mm -hmm. is. And 
it just spells it out really explicitly. And I find that really helpful. That's the part mm-hmm. of the playbook that uh, I think gives you the most value per word in terms of, you know, telling someone what this is all going to be about. Yeah, I definitely felt that when we were looking through them. And I think I said it earlier mm-hmm. in our recording, too, that like it's like each of them's like two sentences and to go down. And it was like, I know I want that one. I know I don't want that yeah. one. You know, like this looks interesting to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think centering it on conflict is really interesting, too, because a lot of them will center it on like, you know, like what kind of powers you can do or like what the you know theme right. is or something like that. And I as a person who loves conflict in games, <laughs> um, like that's <laughs> those are my favorite kinds of games It's like when things, you know, aren't going well. And so I, I liked having it centered on that of like these mm-hmm. are the kinds of things that are going to come up for you. Yeah. And, and it looks like these are laid out uh, so that they fold together. Uh, so, so that blurb would be like front and center, right, right, right on the first page that you see. You get the nice splash image of the name of the playbook, and then this is in bold. Uh, this is the playbook. This is their conflict, um, and then and then like just some example archetypes right there too to kind of get you in the mindset of what sort of characters this playbook can embody, mm-hmm. uh, which is really nice. Yeah, and I also think um, so. Kanisha Bryant did the art for all of the I official playbooks. I love the art, <laughs> and it's so amazing. Good. It's it's, so it's good. really good. There are art free versions of the playbooks for you to doodle your own on there. But I think you know when the game is making a first impression, the art is really significant for setting the right tone mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, not only in terms of like inclusivity uh, around like skin color, body type, et cetera, but also the, the sort of fun, right. And the, 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 the little smiles and mischievous looks and, Mm -hmm. or the, the earnest baby gaze, et cetera. So. Well, and I think, you know, you talked a little bit earlier too, about like the sort of like the realization that it's like, it's not male gazy too. And that like the art is really important to that too. Cause I, I know like I first heard the name of the game and I was like, Okay, like, who's making this, though? Exactly. Like, at this moment of, like, mm, do I want that? <laughs> right. But, like, you know, the art makes it really clear that, like, this is a fun thing, and it is, you know, like, it is queer, and it is, you know, but it's not, like, gross. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That was all, yeah. that was all uh, part of the agenda for the art from the yeah. cover to, um, you know, the playbooks and throughout the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The art Absolutely. is great. The art is so good. It's so mm-hmm. good. <laughs> don't get the don't don't look at the art free ones. <laughs> You're missing they're so something. Good. They're so good. Um, yeah, and I, and I like how uh, the the front is just kind of like the the blurb of your character, and then you go inside uh, to the middle pages, and and there's all the mechanical stuff. Right. It's designed so that. Um, you don't need to flip it too much. Mm-hmm. The stuff that you need while you are in a session is on that sort of center. Um, when you unfold it, it's on that side. Whereas mm-hmm. the stuff that you need when you're making the character and picking the character is on that front half fold. And then the things that you need for bookkeeping and advancement um, or anything that we just couldn't fit <laughs> is mm-hmm. then going to be on the, the back of the fold. Yeah, it's it's interesting because you I'm I'm just uh kind of scrolling through all the all the playbooks that you have and every single one of them uh utilizes that that whole interior space. Um, yeah, which yeah. is great. Um we've got it and this is Fred Hicks at Evil Hat being a layout magician getting <laughs> getting all of this stuff to fit and look good and we had to trim some things down for space especially at the point that we had um like nine other people writing playbooks yeah and uh but managed to get it all pretty consistent and fit in a lot of good stuff so yeah um, yeah uh, i'm just flipping through them now and having good memories about working on all of these with the <laughs> contributors. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because each playbook has its own special, like unique thing to that playbook itself. Mm-hmm. And they're all in the same spot on each of the character sheets. So if you're looking like, I want to pick a playbook based on the, the cool, unique thing that's mm. about them. You can just look at the same spot on each sheet and kind of see what it is. That's true. And that's really neat. 
but yeah, I, I I think looking at the the playbooks themselves and the kind of the the story that they tell and and whatnot is you're no matter who you choose as your character type, it's you're you're gonna have the same uh experience filling out the playbook as every other type in yeah. terms of like you know, the, I write my name and pronouns here. I pick my stats. I put them here. Here's my unique thing. And then here's here's my moves that I get to pick. And so it's not like getting confusing, jumping to a completely different type of playbook mm-hmm. that's laid out totally differently. Um, and, and that's really nice to see. We do love consistency. We do. <laughs> <Great>. I do. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Personally. Uh huh. That's really interesting because I do. I like the consistency and structure, and then also having a very significant diversity of um, the things that we talked about earlier that are different from playbook to playbook. Like how much it does world building, how much drama it requires as a as a floor and yeah. how much spotlight it requires as a floor like those are all things that i guess within the same basic structure are um are consistent but certainly you know the playbooks that have you do more world building like the seeker which requires you to be connected to a toxic power uh, it's in the same place but the process is a little bit different and then yeah. um, the infamous especially uh, is one that sort of has its own little safety tool because you're writing a character who has done harm in the past and is now with people that they may have harmed um, mm-hmm. and so it has its own little safety tool to avoid the situation where you're being pressured to interact with or even forgive someone who's wronged you Mm -hmm. and that's um that's its own little you know pause in character creation to make sure that happens because it's important right it's not just there for funsies to to you know make it a little slower it's there to intentionally slow down make sure that you're not setting up something that's going to feel bad for anyone at the table Mm -hmm. absolutely and that's i also tell people um that playbook feature is um, where you can be extra wordy, right? Like the moves try to keep on the shorter end, but if the words are deserved, if they're doing good work, the feature is a place where you can, you know, write some paragraphs, right? Mm -hmm. About, you know, uh, how you relate to your old toxic power and how when you abide by those commandments, you get this tradition currency, but the tradition Mm -hmm. currency is junk. All you can use it for is to appease the people who are oppressing you (laughs) or deal with them more. So what you really want to do is cross out your commandments and create your own convictions to reflect Mm -hmm. your personal values. Like it's complicated, but um, each playbook gets one of those basically, like one fairly complicated mechanic. And then the moves are smaller chunks. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, Here's one of my favorite questions to ask, uh, especially designers that we have on the show. Um, What do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in the system? And what is one of the best parts? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I, I wish that we had been able to fit the relationship questions right on the sheets. So you don't Mm. have to go digging for another um, document in order to Mm. do that. There are reasons to keep it separate. Um, For example, a bunch of the settings actually replace the default relationship questions with ones that are specific to that setting. Mm -hmm. And that's really neat. And, um, and is something that might be confusing if you also had it on the sheet, but, um, I do think that when you're using the character sheet as part of the character creation flow, having that last step on there would be helpful. So that is something that you just have to, when you're running the game, you have to remember that, you know, you're going to do relationships and you're going to do starting strings. Um, I think the, the core book, each playbook has to be pretty broad. So definitely there are concepts that are um, really well served by getting their own playbook and that's really neat i love that i don't know the flaw mm-hmm. is that it's it's great <laughs> <laughs> no but the point is you know no one person can represent all queer experience and mm-hmm. um two ways to try to address that are a 
pay people to write more stuff, which we did in the expansion book, and B, offer it all under an open license so that people can create their own things, which people are doing. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a limitation that you, you can't really avoid. You, you can't approach it just trying to do it all by yourself better. Mm -hmm. um, but but uh, we haven't tried to do that. So what do I like? You asked um, a strength of character creation, and I'm going to go with the relationships. It's the same yep. thing. It's the same thing. Is also is also really good. So like, yeah, they're hard to find, but once you once you find once them, you found them. They're great, uh, right? They like really spell out some uh, fun emotional dynamics between the PCs, and you can use them for NPCs like we did as well. Mm. Um, so I think I think that's. Uh, really fun step in TSL character creation. I think it's actually also both a pro and con that there are so many playbooks now, right? There are 19 official playbooks and then mm -hmm. at least six fan playbooks that I know about. Um, and that really does let you find one that fits the the concept you're excited about and and broadens the scale of what kind of experiences are represented. But I think it could be a lot to filter through for mm -hmm. a new player. And, you know, Advanced Lovers and Lesbians is mostly a tongue-in-cheek title, but there is some truth to it in the sense that some of those playbooks are either more complex or more specific or require more conversation with the table. Um, and so starting with the core nine can be a good approach for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Legion, for instance, presupposes reincarnation is going to be a part of this setting, mm -hmm. right? So so the the books that show up in advanced lovers and lesbians aren't necessarily right for every game um and so that's sort of like a first a first cut if you want to keep it simple but again we talked about how that's a design trade-off right simplicity versus flexibility mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um a lot of the sometimes i make decisions like that but other times I just present options right um so you can here's if you want to err on the side of simple go with this if you want to err on the side of flexible we got over two dozen playbooks you're gonna yeah. find something or you know if you don't write one yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely ryan it is time for your favorite part of the show oh so good um this is our fanfic portion of the show because we don't <laughs> play the game we like Aww. to talk about what we think would happen yeah. uh, um oh so, there's so much Let's discuss. Ryan, uh, you look like you're like itching to. There's so many strings to pull on. I know. Like, that's I don't why mean we to have that this to section. Be, I don't mean to that to be a pun because there's strings in the game. But <laughs> um, yeah, goodness. Where, where do we start? Well, so personally, I have to figure out why do I want revenge on Evangeline? Ooh. Oh, yeah. I don't know what for. So to Maybe it has out. to do with your ghostly companion. Right, the mysterious person mm. who's who's with you. Do yeah. you think? Yeah. I mean, Evangeline East Souls, at least right. her ship does. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that so we does know she of. do something to this soul? And like now I am I've become very attached to like my my little companion. Did she take something from it? Is the soul like partially harmed by Evangeline's uh, that's process? Why, that's oh. why you can't. He's like it can't hear other soul. Other soul can't hear it. Yeah, <gasps> and she still Angelina, has it. Monster. She still has it. You oh. could get it back. Yeah, she's probably got some like trophy or something. Like, yeah. oh, <laughs> okay. She's so evil, but so hot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, Amaranth is um somebody who is the reincarnation of. Uh, the beloved of, of an enemy. one of the past past lives of uh, Evangeline. Uh, right, 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 right. right. Oh, so, that's right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, what if what if that revenge also transcends time, and the revenge is from that past relationship? So she, Evangeline's previous incarnation loved you. Yeah, mm -hmm. loved your previous incarnation. And right. what if? Uh, Evangeline's previous incarnation dumped betrayed me? and dumped you. <laughs> oh my god! For my previous reincarnation, whoa! My previous uh, self. So Evangeline's old self left your old self for my old self, 
Whoa. I need a diagram. Yeah. Our shipping, our well, shipping. when you're, when you're yeah. talking about, hey, I've lived thousands of lives, right, don't worry about right. it. I know. And meanwhile, and so my character is like else. made of a dozen people or more. So right. the shipping exactly. charts. Yeah. <laughs> the shipping charts are off the, the charts. charts yeah. oh. Right. Like navigating the stars, no problem. Figuring out all the, all the relationships, like mm. mapping the polycule. <laughs> uh huh. Rough. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I want revenge on her for dumping me. Do I? Re- yeah. Because both of you remember all these past lives or like, mm. I mean, kind of do, even if you're yeah. losing those memories. Yeah. Does everyone remember past lives? Well, I don't because know. Because that wasn't like at all part of m- no, my I don't think, playbook or I don't anything. Think every- but like, I don't think everybody would, but yeah. like, um, I wonder if, if, if the desire for revenge has like transcended if i can lives. talk to souls can i talk to my own soul Ooh. oh oh i love that so now i know <laughs> because i've talked possible. to my own soul yeah your but you've got to you've got to risk a downbeat because you're communing with the unseen so that could easily go awry yeah oh <laughs> yeah oh. i could, right? I could like, see it's that dangerous as to all separate. necromancy should yes it's dangerous to it try to separate self from you know yeah. past selves yeah. any any kind of weird thing could happen like you might wind up with a ghostly companion that for some reason isn't quite right it has no name yeah, yeah. oh right so, yes so now then, the ultimate question is do i want revenge on evangeline which i mean technically i do because that's what my playbook says <laughs> But, or do I just want to win her back? <laughs> yeah. The the ultimate vengeance is to turn her to our side? Well, I mean, I think the ultimate vengeance is obviously to make her jealous and be like, look what you could have had. Yeah. Okay, how about this? What if <laughs> we learn, we learn that the reason Evangeline has these, the, the, these, necromantic powers to consume mm-hmm. souls is a result of research that she was doing in that previous life that has had lasting repercussions for you in your latest incarnation that has mm-hmm. left you attuned to the unseen um and and that she still holds that piece of you who were once her beloved and wants the rest oh my god oh man <laughs> and this this ups the stakes because what happens to those souls that are consumed Right. Like, I don't think we know. No. And that unknown is is probably also driving us as rivals even more. Oh, because we we all three of us have stakes yeah. in those souls not getting obliterated. Well, I yeah. foresee a scene where Evangeline finds um, our Legion at her lowest moment. And says there's only one way to end this eternity of tragedy and harming those you love. Oh, and no. And that's, <gasps> that's to get my soul, soul engine. It'll end this this torment that you keep going through. Don't do it. If you just it. give your no. soul to me. Because I don't think my character has past life souls. I think the past life souls are all in me. Right. Right, and you'll or just, just you incarnate one soul. Felt every bit of that tragedy, and she is offering yeah. to end that for you. Oh no! <laughs> and also, you know that you loved her. I know, and oh no, I can imagine. <laughs> and now you're gonna hurt her again. I don't know. That's oh gosh, that's that's like <laughs> the ultimate tragic end. Yeah. yeah. Which is obviously like the only up. way to play this game. <laughs> if you give yeah. up on breaking the cycle. There has to be like a uh, like a, a storyline in in our our like endless campaign where uh, <laughs> where Ariella betrays the crew and goes to Evangeline <sighs> for like this uh, it, like really intense love, yeah. right? Yeah. And and eventually gets to that point of. You know, she's not doing it to be devious. She's not suggesting this to be devious. She wants to end my tragic cycle. Right. For, for, to get rid of all that pain. Right. 
Yeah. So like, what and then we had to deal with the question the of like, <laughs> yeah. you know, if we know that you're cursed and bad things happen to the people that you love, should we just leave you alone because we want bad things to happen to Evangeline anyway? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Tactical and, tragedy. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the thing. It's like, okay, well now this person that I love the most from a previous life and now this one, like transcending time, that love, and then. Do I sacrifice myself, I thus ending that story, or sacrifice? But like, her? whatever she's doing is like terrible, right? Yeah, like we have to yeah, know that. She's consuming so, souls, yeah. But like, yeah. whatever she's doing with them, because here's Do the thing: is like, I wonder, does is it more powerful the more lives you have lived? So, like, are you handing her, like, just a ton of, of power? power oh, by totally. Doing it's got to be. Oh, goodness. And, oh, I can imagine, like, there's, like, a clash between uh, Ariella and the crew of uh, the, the, the Solar Flare, mm -hmm. where, like, I'm, like, fighting against you because of this is my one chance to end the cycle. Right. Oh, no. Like, and like, us being and, like, but you are handing her enough power yeah, to, like, I know. undo everything. Uh, oh, yeah, so good. I will fight you. I will take my sword of claws and <laughs> I will fight you for your own good because I insist that we can defy fate together. Mm -hmm. I'll but, fight you too, but I'll look ridiculous while I do that. <laughs> right. Or what if, what like if my there's footwork like, is terrible, but I'm effective. I'm effective, but clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> A strategic tripping. Uh -huh. it's, the, it's the three stooges of fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always oh, just amazing. keep winding like tumbling together and one landing on top of the other it's yeah. just it's so clumsy so yeah. terrible i'm I'm wondering uh because like switching to a new playbook is an option in advances and yeah. like um what if the solution is to cut free of all the past lives Ooh. as part of that switch right you and just have to agree to like forget so, them so instead of obliterating my entire self, I cut that tie to all of those past lives mm -hmm. and give up the power and thus ending the cycle of, of tragedy. So yeah. like instead of like grappling with this fact that you're forgetting, you're just like, then we'll just forget altogether. And then yeah. and nothing then go, to some, go to something else. Would you advance into like a nature witch to start oh, exploring gosh. like life just as yourself figure out who you are or yeah maybe what what would i be without this past experience that sounds so yeah. fascinating yeah, yeah that's absolutely. a lot to unpack a little bit <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no that sounds perfect because like you know the the nature which feels like this this character that's like you know trying to become deeply connected to everything and mm -hmm. And that's what my character ultimately wants, right? And to cut those ties would be both devastating and relieving at the same time. I think yeah. there's also the opportunity for my character that, like, Evangeline is, like, the only other person I know that's really, like, doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like, if I want to, like, grow at all and, like, learn new things or hone my craft, like, there's not a lot of other options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we have do we have to merge the crews at some point? <laughs> I mean, in in season 1, there are the awkward team up episodes where yeah. we are forced to work together side by side, but Of course. Of course we don't like each other. We are yeah. we are enemies to the last. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I could totally see that later on. And I also like going back to letting go of the past lives. One of the themes of the hollow goddess is sort of grieving for people that you have um, known and lost. And I think that the sort of resolution of that arc with grieving together with um, you for your past lives could be what precipitates a playbook change for Solar mm -hmm. Flare as well. And, and I think because of that anxious... Um, sense that we set up between Amaranth and Solar Flare, um, the Evangeline's 
tug on amaranth is going to be really dramatic for solar flare as well and Mm -hmm. and she might Mm -hmm. act out especially as an imperious mermaid ghost yeah (laughs) absolutely yeah she's gonna gonna take some foolish risks what's that I said, we made this worse. Like, the fanfic is supposed to, like, help solve some of that, like, you know. <laughs> We're just, like, lingering just feelings. We're like, what if m- more loose ends? I know. Well, I mean, <laughs> that, that kind of feels on par for what this game is shooting for, I right? I know. It's true. Uh, up, up the drama, up the, up the, the thirst, and up, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe if we're looking for a resolution, we eventually find that Evangeline ought to be a legion, and this is her way of avoiding her tragedy, is feeding, feeding souls into this uh, necromantic magic and so we can all do this like kind of moving on grieving letting go of the past and build something new together Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah i I figure like the the main like it'll come to a head that the climax of our like big arc is to destroy this technology that eats the souls yeah so that way we can reclaim them but then once we do that we can't just leave Evangeline and her crew and all these souls to just, you know, become right. stranded or wither away. So we take them on as our as part of our crew and effectively double our family and then have to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm getting kind of like a Star Trek Voyager season one <laughs> vibe here right? um, where where you've got two enemies that are stranded far away and they're forced to become a family together hmm. yes found family how about forced family forced found family we found you and then we forced you onto our ship and now you're our family uh to save their lives right for their own the good least. obviously yes <laughs> uh for, for a situation that we we happen to do uh, right. <laughs> I'm Whoops. sorry to inform you that um, on this ship there is only one bed. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that one so, coming. Get cozy. That's, <laughs> That's what she said. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Uh huh. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So. <laughs> th- <laughs> there's there's a lot of directions that this game can take and this uh it, it the fan fiction yes it's supposed to <laughs> make us like have a little bit of like closure with these characters and now i want to in i want to experience it more yep Ugh. why do we do this to ourselves because we are uh masochists at heart um and it's character fine. creation cast it's just foreplay <laughs> that's true. It's true. And we never get anywhere. No. Nope. It's Alas. fine. Well, let's do we talked about it a little bit in this segment, but let's talk a little bit more about advancement in our mm. take it up a level section. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. Um, so how does a character level up in this game? Yeah, so you can earn experience in various ways. And I'll pause there because one of the things that experience does in the system is it acts as temptation. So sometimes mm. when your character is being tempted, there will also be this mechanical layer of temptation where you're, you're being offered an XP. Um, so this is one of the ways that strings can be used to exert influence on um, a PC. And it is also an excuse to give in to that temptation, right? As like, if we oh, I'm going to do it. Excuses, I'm going to take the XP, <laughs> right? <laughs> but we talked a little bit about, like, coming from a culture of play that requires that you, you know, always do the optimal thing or else you're yep. letting the, the group down. Like, that's not at all the ethos here. And the mechanics reinforce that, right? Like, mm-hmm. you're going to get an mm-hmm. XP for giving in to temptation. It's a whole mechanic. It's fun. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so you advance that way, Um, you know, there are a few different ways where sort of giving up 
um, your agency by giving into temptation or whatever uh, gets you this XP. And that encourages a conversation at the table because everyone is contributing to sort of deciding what happens next. And then you also earn XP uh, at the end of each session and also when you roll a downbeat. So basically, um, if you roll enough downbeats and, and things are going uh, not, not your character's way, you will eventually be able to use those XP to get yourself some new abilities or improve your stats. So the basic two things that you do with XP are those things that I mentioned, either increasing your basic stats so that when you roll them, you're more likely to get an upbeat or acquiring new moves, which can be from your playbook or from another playbook. And so you can make some pretty cool uh, builds that blur two different playbooks or more than two playbooks together. Um, if you're, if your spooky witch has a bit of a scoundrel in them or whatever, um, then you can do that mechanically through advancement. And once you've done that a few times, you unlock new advancement options of either living happily ever after or advancing into a new playbook. So this is what we were talking about. If you want your character to sort of resolve their initial emotional arc, or mm. if you feel like you've resolved it, um, and then pick a new playbook and a new struggle. Um, and I also recommend a costume change when you do that as well. Mm. Really Important. like any advancement, feel free to take a costume change, but definitely if you're swapping playbooks, Mm -hmm. I want to know what your new look is that, mm -hmm. that reflects that new playbook. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic arc of advancement. Um, when you move into your new playbook, you are a lot like a starting character, but you get to keep one bonus move from your, um, from your first playbook. So it's, it's not a, a system about um, going up and up and up and getting the big numbers. Um, but it is a system that lets you, you know, keep growing your character through different stages of their mm -hmm. story. Absolutely. Um, and it, it feels like the, uh, the advancements, uh, do have an effect on the narrative or vice versa, mm -hmm. uh, where you have, uh, once your conflict is resolved, uh, and a new conflict emerges, that's that's just a natural progression to picking a different playbook. Yeah. Right, right. Um, my Legion that I was playing, her tragedy was that she would always trust the wrong person and wind up being used as a weapon. Um, and now she's found people that she trusts completely and has taken the Blade Soul fan playbook and turns into a weapon to help them and is having oh. a lot of angst around that because... Uh, one of her wives tried to use her to attack someone else that she loves. So we're having a good old angsty time um, <laughs> dealing with that that conflict in a new way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this in a in a long running game, um, the you know you will see a playbook change after like seven to ten sessions, mm -hmm. um, unless you want to use. I have some alternate rules uh, that will stretch that out a little bit longer um, where you're actually directly investing XP in um, changing the world setting. Mm. The, I call them setting advances. Um, and so again, in the, in the theme of, you know, I don't think any choices are wrong. I have a default. That's my preference. And then I present options. I have yeah. <laughs> you know the default pace of advancement and then mm -hmm. options to, uh, to change that in an interesting way, right? Like it wouldn't be so fun to just be like, well, it takes more XP to advance if you want it to be a longer story. Like that's simple. You could do that. It won't, it won't ruin everything. But what if I gave you uh, <laughs> interesting choices about the setting that says yeah. a, as a sink for your XP, if you want it to go longer. So, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. I would definitely do that too. I know. Just you and I would both take that. We'd be like leveling up. <laughs> no, how about? Yep. Right, right, yeah. Yep. Oh, it's so good. Well, that is, uh, the only version of that is in a Twitter thread that I posted until um, Alexis and I finish writing Falling Deeper, which will be the next big uh, TSL supplement. Oh, um, wonderful. Focusing on um, longer term relationships and ongoing relationships and, and those challenges. So oh, wow. look cool. forward to that. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, goodness. 
Well, is there anything else that you wanted to say uh, about uh, Thirsty Sword Lesbians before we head out, April? No, I mean, buy it. It's great. <laughs> it's <laughs> buy so it really at swordlesbians.com and uh, tell me about your characters on Twitter. I'm at Gay Spaceship GMS, Gay Spaceship Games. So that's what I want. I want the stories. I want the fan art. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I want to hear about uh, how it made you gay and got you a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Now I'm like, oh, I got to play this game and I can get a girlfriend. And I'm like, I know. So what I'm hearing is. No, I do the fight for girlfriend, wrong. not guaranteed. Oh. <laughs> Offer void were prohibited. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I was told. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's got to be better oh. than whatever I've been doing, which is clearly, like, not working, so. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Oh, it's COVID. <sighs> <laughs> well, yeah. April, thank you so much for joining us to talk about Thirsty Sword Lesbians. This has been such a delight. Can you go ahead and remind everyone where they can find you online and what sort of things you're working on? Yeah, sure thing. So you can find me at gayspaceship.com. That'll take you to my itch. Or you can go right to swordlesbians.com to check out TSL, which is published by Evil Hat. I'm at gayspaceshipgms on Twitter and love to hear about your characters and stories and adventures and everything. I am currently working on a revision of my game End of the Line, where you are the crew of a sentient spaceship on the way to being scrapped and will be asked whether you say goodbye. I am working on Falling Deeper, which is more good stuff for Thirsty Sword Lesbians, as well as a couple more games, a cozy space adventure game called I Will Carry You, and a tactical game that also has lots of feelings called Dream With Me. And all of this will be coming eventually. So follow my Twitter <laughs> and my itch. And um, also check out all the great contributors to the official materials. The expansion is available for pre-order now. Uh, you can find that through um, swordlesbians.com. And there are also a whole bunch of really neat um, fan works that people are writing, adventures and playbooks. And I curate a collection of those on itch. So if you go to gayspaceship.com, you'll be able to find that collection. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's as we record, Valentine's Day is coming up and there is a whole bunch of um, material being bundled together on the uh, the itch platform by community creators. So check that out if it's still up there. But if not, it's at least six new playbooks and settings and adventures. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, I have just finished playing all 19 of the official playbooks. Nice. I finally, oh, wow. finally got my investigator in. <laughs> so now I can keep working through the fan playbooks until I've, until I've played them all. Got to play them all. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, April, thank you so much for sitting down with us. This was so much fun. Like, mm -hmm. had just like, oh, it was such a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. So great to be here. I love being necro space pirates with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you to everyone for tuning in. Call to action. Yeah, like that. Amelia says things about the game. Um, no, that's what we always put in the notes, and then I get to say whatever I want, which is that this game was fantastic. I'm really excited that we got a chance to cover it. Mm -hmm. It's been kind of on my list. I backed the original Kickstarter whenever yeah. that was, whatever time is, um, and I haven't gotten to play it, but it was it was everything that I could want. I, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed having queer content that wasn't about the struggle of being queer. Yes. And I loved just the aesthetic of it. I loved the story that we made. Yeah. Um, for those of you who haven't taken a look at the book, um, the art is just fantastic. That's it's gorgeous. brightly colored. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. This whole game, it's fantastic. Fantastic. Um, before we let you go, though, we do have some calls to action real quick. Um, and then on to the outtakes. Mm -hmm. First up, uh, we would love to get some more reviews from you. If you can leave a review on Podchaser, Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addicts, Spotify, etc., uh, we would greatly appreciate that. 
Uh, if you leave a five-star review, we will read it on the show. If you have a few moments, we would love to hear from you. Absolutely. If you have a few more moments, you can update iTunes before you leave the review. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stupid iTunes. Um, <laughs> I always want to leave reviews, and then I'm like, I don't I have 40 minutes to mess around with this. Uh -huh. So that's why we list all of those lovely other places that you can leave reviews if you don't have time to Absolutely. update iTunes for the 30th time this week mm -hmm. before you leave your review. Update later. Update later. <laughs> Uh, you can also support our show and other shows on the network financially by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. You get access to the secret archive at the $5 and up level. Uh, we don't talk a lot about the other levels, but there is one for um, a book club. So you mm. get a new game every month. There's one for t-shirts. There's one for being able to send um, letters for the campaign podcast, mm. uh, all kinds of stuff. So if you are able to, um, please head over to patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Mm -hmm. And also don't forget to check out the Truth of Hearts bundle over on itch.io for some more amazing character options for thirsty sword lesbians and even some settings to help you get going uh, into some grand adventures, uh, as well as the advanced lovers and lesbians expansion that is on backer kit. That is all we have for today's episode. A reminder that we are off next week for the fourth week in the month. But don't worry, February only has four, so we won't be gone for too long. <laughs> um, until then, stay safe, drink water, relax your shoulders, and unclench your jaw. <laughs> get vaccinated. Try to get a good night's sleep. Don't feel bad if you can't. And keep making those amazing people. We will see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like All My Fantasy Children. Each week, Aaron Katana Saez and Jeff Stormer take a listener-submitted prompt and, using some of their favorite tabletop RPGs, create an original fantasy character. Along the way, they share laughs, stories, verbal hugs, and populate a shared universe one story at a time. E Nailed it. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. I've got waveforms. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh.
Oh, I'm excited. I, I, I'm seeing Amelia looking down and having these like amazing colorful glasses going on. And um, it reminded me I'm getting new glasses on Monday. They're, they're Are coming you in. Finally? Congrats. Yeah. It's Did been, you find teal ones? Uh, they're like a almost teal. They're like a dark blue, almost more closer to cerulean than uh, teal, probably. Um, but, you know, still on brain, still one of Sailor Neptune's primary colors. So whatever. Oh, nice. I tried to find a better teal one, but the the sizes of those frames are too small for my ginormous head. So uh, the life of uh, the big headed individual, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's when when I asked Dan, too, he was like, yeah, it's going to be tough because he's like he said he can find fun, fun ones like shape wise. But he said the like colorful ones are harder to find for like the wider oh. frames. Oh. Yeah, I, I hope I ordered the right size. Um I can't remember what I ordered, but it looked nice. And like the little virtual thing that they give you to like virtually try on in a very spooky way. Um, mm-hmm. Like you can turn your head to the left. And oh, right yeah. And I don't like that thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really weird looking. But like I did that and it looked like it should fit. Cool. So we'll see. Hopefully. Uh-huh. Let me get back to that page. See, I said I was ready, but I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I lied. That's all right. And now I'm thirsty because I was drinking coffee. Big fan. I will eat the batteries. That's what I have to do. <laughs> it's really, it really grosses me out that that's like the same thing that's in batteries. It just like there's something about like, and like I it never... makes you feel how eating batteries should make you feel, which is gross. Oh no. <laughs> I never, I never uh, thought about that connection before. I mean, it's really not because I take lithium carbonate. You can't just like eat straight lithium. Well, it's, right. You know, can't just eat batteries. Um, no. But there's something in my there's like this part in the back of my head that's like, that's what's in batteries, and you just yeah. swallowed over a gram of it. Oh my gosh. Every day. Yeah, we were just talking about. <laughs> like, uh, gross. We were just talking about pyramid schemes, right? Then the thing after after tungsten cubes is going to be eating lithium batteries for right health right. benefits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, let me tell you, the health benefits of lithium are pretty great. <laughs> right? However, it does make me throw up sometimes. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yep, yep. Yep. I think that may be a side effect of eating batteries as well. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly my point. Right? Take that, tech bros. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. so now I'm picturing, you know, those like um, soft batteries. Just like a Capri Sun, stick like a <laughs> straw in there. Yeah. yeah. Get you up. Yeah, that's great. That's great for your kidney function. <laughs> Have fun on dialysis. Yep. Oh, okay. It's fine. Or don't. That's the way. Up to you. Oh, amazing. I was just uh, pawing through the playbooks and, and seeing which ones stuck out to me. I know. Many, I was scrolling through and I was so like, many good ones. Mm, I don't know. So many good ones. So many good ones. I, mean, I found a couple ones, that I was which like. Which ones call you out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hey. Uh-uh. Come on. Peggy. I'm trying to eat this ox. You're messing up. You're messing up the waveforms. Peggy. Peggy. Look at you looking at me. <laughs> Just, Just, looking over, Just looking over your shoulder at the camera. You look like a mop. Is, is she in uh, mop phase again? She's in mop mode. She needs to go to oh, the that's groomer. Good. She's very. The... She's starting to shed now, so she's really. Oh no! Gotta get her in for a haircut. Cause... Yeah. Uh, once once you turn Muppet mode on. Yep. Yeah, it's Muppet mode activate. <laughs> My sister sent me a picture of Winnie today that was like her pouting, and she was like, "It's because I told her she couldn't be pants." <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> she's like, "Yes, I told her she could not be pants." <laughs> You can't be pants. Why? Why would you say that to her? She can be whatever she wants. <laughs> Including pants. Including pants. Oh. My mom was like, Mary, you can't say that to her. You used to want to be a plate when you grew up. So <laughs> <laughs> if the oh, dog wants no. to be pants, let her be pants. <laughs> let her be pants. <laughs> oh. Okay. Is that a Marie Antoinette quote? Yeah, I think it is. That's historically accurate. Let them be pants. Let her be pants. <laughs> it's for you, Winnie. They you, have can be, you can be whatever you want, dog, mm-hmm. if you're listening to this <laughs> podcast. 
<laughs> if my parents' dog is listening to this podcast, you can be whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I'm waiting for my glasses to come in. Oh, yeah, um, that's what you said. I, like, they should be yeah, here soon, yeah. They should have been here yesterday. But, no. you know, they were coming from California, mm. uh, left on the 30th. And I'm like, there's no way it's going to be here within a day. Yeah. And delivered by the post office by 9 p.m. That No, that's not going to happen. And it didn't, obviously, because I still have my current glasses. And goodness gracious, I'm waiting because this one's... The, the film of the, like, blue light filter or one of oh, those. Oh, is it, like, like certain things. peel and, like. It's, like, there's there's this Swiss cheese oh, all yeah, over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, parts of it are good and parts are not, and it's just really blurry half the time. Yeah, Depending on good. where I'm looking. It's, it's really annoying. That's no good. So I'm excited. And they're colorful. Well. I'm excited I mean, for you. It's, 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 dark, it's a dark blue. It's not a black. But, you know, I got, I got a baby steps. Still a change, you know? Yeah. I'm excited. Just got to get there now. Any minute. Now. Soon. Any minute. It could be right. It could be in my mailbox right now. It could right be now. at the door right now. We, gotta, we better hurry up and record this oh cold open so you can go check. Gosh. <laughs> 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 Gonna have to. I don't want them to get all fogged up when I burn them in. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, shall we do a cold open? We should. It made me yawn. I know. I'm so tired. It's fine. It's Monday. No, wait. It's Tuesday. It is it, Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. Please uh, don't make it be Monday again. No. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm uh, somewhere. Excuse you. I'm in the middle of something. Hey. <laughs> Kurt choked. At least it's not the squeakies. Yeah. Welcome to the beginning of... Mm, <laughs> that went mm -hmm, bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can talk. Solid. <laughs> here, here we go again. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Huzzah. And this is normally where we would stop the recording, but if you want to go ahead and plug that, uh, that'd be yeah. absolutely... Uh, we can just... All right. right, I'll figure out where to put that. Uh, and okay, now, now we can stop this first recording. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, click on the stop button right now. Yay. Oh. We did it. Waveforms. I, I think I need to turn down my gain a little bit. I. Where's my gain? Where's my gain? <laughs> There's my gain. A little bit less gain. A little too more. No, a little bit more. There we go. Ooh, now I can hear it. Perfect. I was about to sneeze and then I didn't, and then there was a loud airplane. I've been um, I've been peeking a lot uh, mm. in in the in the edits, and I think it's because of the new mic position, mm -hmm. uh, new room, less uh, more noise. New mic, who dis? Yeah, new mic, uh, new position. I don't know. New house, who dis? New house, who dis? <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it. So. So I, now I have lowered the gain significantly. It looks to be around 12 to 18 in the minus dBs. So that seems pretty good. And I don't think I'm losing any waveforms. I don't think I'm peaking anymore. And if I, if I get really close to the mic, that's where I might peak. But if I sit a couple inches back, that should be okay. What are you doing over there? That is making so much noise. Oh, the puppy. Oh, you found keyboard keys. Peggy. What happened to all your fur, Peggy? Um, my dad cut it off. It's all gone, Peggy. It's all gone. She's not fluffy anymore. <laughs> no, she was she was getting really matted because it was so long. Yeah. Um, because right. I needed to take her to the groomer and had not yet. When when um, you are a Muppet and you're not supposed to be a Muppet, I can imagine that would be very uh disconcerting. Yeah, a little problematic. Mm -hmm. So my dad offered to give her a trim, so she went and had a sleepover at her best friend's house. Oh. Um, and then got a haircut. Well, that's nice. And it was very weird because it was the longest I had ever been away from her, and it was very hard. Ah. It was just weird to, like, wake up and be like, oh, I don't have to, like, put my snow boots on and take this dog out. Uh -huh. Oh, that's kind of cool. That, that, but then that I is. missed her. <laughs> but then I missed her because there was no one to, like, keep my feet warm while I was playing video games. That's very fair. Um, that's what dogs are for. 
That's true. I can imagine. They are nice uh, foot warmers and uh, side warmers and uh, who knows what else. Uh, yeah, I mean, mine because mine is small enough. You know, she's like the size of a large-ish cat. You know, yeah. she's like not that big. Um, so she likes to like sit on my feet while I play video games. I, I could nice. not get used to a dog bigger than that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I've had both, but. I mean, I guess that's fair. She's a good middle size. My parents have one that's like, you know, like teeny tiny and she's mm. yappy and I don't like her. She's kind of mean. My um, my mom and her husband had a giant, gigantic black lab. Oh, those things get so big it and they're so energetic. Uh, probably 300 pounds. I don't know. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe 100. No. It, it was, was well over 100. It had I to mean, have been. I mean, maybe. I don't know. This thing was a bear. It was like, (laughs) (laughs) its tail was a registered weapon. That's the thing with labs is like, like I said, they're super energetic and like they will like fling their tails. Like I knew one that like broke her tail once because she like wagged it so hard into something. I can imagine. My goodness. Like ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Peggy's a good size for... For an apartment dog. I think she's technically like a medium yeah. size. I don't know. Anyway, podcast. Anyway, podcast, yes. All right. I've got the notes open. I think I have everything altered good or well, whatever English means. Mm-hmm. Um, we should be all set. Okay. All right. I need to maybe adjust this slightly so I can actually read the bottom portion. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, we have an intrusion. Oh, oh, look at this little one. Well, not so little one. You want to say hi? Hi. Hello. Okay, here we go. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. <laughs> All right. Can we can we finish the recording? My children are sorry. What was that? Okay. Say <laughs> bye, Amelia. Goodbye, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Now oh, we got barking. Thank you. Quiet. Hey. Goodness gracious, kids, kids, kids of all species. Okay. How, how are we doing? Where are we at? Woof. Woof. That's what Peggy says <laughs> okay. about that. All right. There's a dog on the loose. Dog. Dog, eh? She keeps, like, eating my jeans. So okay. I have to, like, keep her out of the closet because she keeps eating my pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, how else to say that? She keeps eating my pants. Ah, uh, pig. Down to, like, two pairs of pants. No. Stop eating the jeans. All right. Get out of the closet. Okay. This is Thirsty Sword Lesbians. You don't need to be in the closet anymore. <laughs> This is prime queer content, Peggy. 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 It's 2022. (laughs) Get out of my closet. Stay out of the closet. We love you for who you are. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We love you for just who you are. (laughs) She's like, yeah, but you don't love me when I eat your pants. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) Somehow you still do. The dog to stop doing this. (laughs) Not that would be one. You have been asleep all day, I swear to God. <laughs> it's like two minutes, Peggy. <gasps> Peggy! <laughs> Peggy! <laughs> my kids aren't even home, so I guess my dog will have to be the one to interrupt. It's fine. <sighs> no! Come here. Why are you like this? Only when I record. <laughs> Come here. Because it's business time. <sighs> oh, you're paying attention to someone that's not me. Mm-hmm. I was recently a guest on Kill Every Monster. I joined Aram and Dylan to talk about my favorite things, skeletons and zombies Mm -hmm. and the undead or Peggy. (laughs) Peggy, soon to be undead. Soon to be. Come here. So close. Come here. I will not be using my dog patch on my robe of many things or whatever it was. (laughs) That was a reference. <laughs> if you want to hear more about the or 
Are you about to say this oral? Is so oral. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Oral. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you done? <laughs> oh my god! Why is it so hard? She literally was asleep all day. <sighs> Just. <laughs> tick tock. Tick tock. Oh, the puppy. You will sit here now. Yeah. I'm just going to start over. <laughs> Ooh, we did it. Just barely. Just barely. Okay. I did it. Yeah, I clicked it, and I see waveforms. All right. I have to sneeze or not. We, we know whenever you announce that. that you have to sneeze, <laughs> Yeah, I know that you're happens. not going to do it. I know, <laughs> but it was like, I think it's my turn to ask a question, but like... <sighs> All right. We can stop recording. All stop right. Stop that button. Yeah. Do you ever think, like, what we would do if I did the clicky? Oh. I, I don't know. <laughs> I have never considered that. I haven't until just now oh. as you were doing it. And then I was like, I never do clicky. You never do clicky. If you want to and do then clicky, I was like, I don't, you can. Is that too I much pressure? I don't know that I do. I think, A, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. B, like... I don't know. It just wouldn't be the same. No. Because, like, I can't, like, I wouldn't even want to imitate the low voice because I think that that's, you know, like, I don't want to, like, I would never be as good at it. So it's just, yeah. like, be a, a, a bad Well, you can't, you don't have to do the low voice. You just have to do the, the, this is my radio voice. I don't think that I have a radio voice. I have, like, an NPR voice. I can do, like, I guess that's true. You could, you, could yeah, like see. Three, two. One. And see, now everybody's asleep clicky. before they can click the button. Right. So, like, that's the thing. It's like, I can't because I have, like, a, a soft, like... It's true. It's my, it's my radio voice. It's just, yeah. like... It's fine. Which is not at all, like, my real voice, which is, in fact, very loud <laughs> um, and very excited. So... Absolutely. I can't so, forget I said anything. I'm not going to do the clicky. It was a good thought exercise, though. It was. Yeah. It's interesting I, to consider. Oh, here comes the child. Hey, yeah, I'm about to record my cold open. Do you want to say hi to Amelia again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> hi. Hello. There you go. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Good. You're so smiley today. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Super adorable. You're so cute. She's gotten so big, though. I know. Uh-huh. She's so big. How old are you now? Two. Three. Two. Three. Three? Three and a half. You're on your way to four. It's important to lie about your age, though. That's true. As a woman, you just gotta, like... (laughs) Subtract that. (laughs) Starting A couple years. (laughs) (laughs) Are you kidding? Are you kidding me, she says. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Uh. We should get our kids to read the, um... The show blurbs. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, yours can't really read yet, though. No, we can tell them what to say, though. Yeah, because mine can mine can just read it, but and just edit it out. Yeah. Hey, can I read show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Yeah. Show blurbs. <laughs> That's how Nate would do it. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. <laughs> yeah. Because he's a preteen. Uh Uh-huh. Good Lord. What happened? (laughs) I, right? This is what I'm saying about the sixth grades. Back on task, because we're both in a great headspace to be back on task. Oh, my God. I think I found the sweater. (laughs) Case and point. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Peggy is, like, obsessed with her pink sweater, and it's falling apart, and I've Mm. been looking for one. I think I just found it. Okay. There you go. (laughs) Show notes. Okay. No, no. I'm ready. Now we gotta read some show notes. Now we gotta actually do this. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. Um, I will do five count. That's what we do. Five count. And then I will attempt to read some words. Welcome to podcasting. No, no promises. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo. We finally did it. We did it. We After made a podcast, except minutes. that we already 
made the podcast, but we made really the podcast we just even better. Opening the cold all the podcasts and, and now I'm gonna click on the stuff.